Welcome to the Postmodern Art Podcast! Ah! <clears throat> Thank you, Brandon Saucy Collier. Check his link in the description. Anyways, I'm your host, Nathan Raglan, and today's episode, in my opinion, is one that needs to be heard. Yes, I went with the easy pun today. Give me a break, okay? Today we have Amanda Hurd, a background and storyboard artist working with Spindle Horse Tunes and on Farfetched with her own amazing webcomic in Sebastian. This chat was a lovely one to have, even with a little bit of desync on my end, so I apologize for that for the video viewers, but it was still a great and deep conversation that I hope you all enjoy as much, if not more, than I did. If you do enjoy, go support Amanda in the links below if you haven't already. If you enjoyed the podcast, consider subscribing or commenting your favorite part below. Also, I have a merch shop with brand new Pride merch, with all the proceeds from that Pride merch going to Lambda Literary or the Trans Lifeline, both outstanding charities supporting LGBTQ plus causes. So, check the merch in the link below. Also, if you enjoy the podcast and want a place to talk about it, check out the Apocalypse Podcast Network Discord server. I'm fairly active on Discord, so hop in, talk about some of your favorite parts, artists you may want to see on the podcast eventually. Just feel free and have some fun. Join the party. We have we share fun memes. We talk about Pop-Tarts. It's incredible. In fact, let's hear about another amazing podcast in the Apocalypse Podcast Network. Hot Goss with Trash Comedy is the podcast where we trade sweet, sweet facts like they're dirty little pieces of gossip. We're a New York-based comedy team and we're joined each week with a funny, delightful friend. After each person shares their facts, we rate those facts from, oh my god, that's not hot, that's as cold as the coldest ice you've ever seen, to, oh my god, that's so spicy, my mouth is gone. So if that made sense to you, then please join us on Mondays, wherever you get your podcasts. And now, without further ado, please enjoy the Postmodern Art Podcast. I'm talking about stuff. And still talking. I think that should be fine. I, I, I think if it's a little cool. soft, it, it's better for it to be a little soft than a little too loud. Okay. Because I can always that's bump fine. it up a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's cool. No problem. Beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous, stunning. Love it! Um <laughs> Ah, uh, goodness. I have just been all over the place today, and I'm just glad to finally get okay. to this. <laughs> oh, my God. Same. Like, I literally was like, okay, I'm going to do this podcast today, but I'm going to get some work done first. There and, you like, go. No, but I didn't, though. Like, that's the <laughs> thing. It's like, I, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I, but I was just too freaking out, you know, like, about being on camera and, like, talking and, like, being recorded, so I just didn't do anything. I just took a nap, and <laughs> uh, then I put makeup on, and now I'm here. So, so there like, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it makes you feel any better, you seem comfortable right now, which is great. Yay! Um, <laughs> that's great. Um, awesome. I, I was gonna say right before I was doing this, I actually had my my nephew had his uh, first birthday party today, so I had to oh. deal with all that stuff, and then coming home, yeah. taking care of dogs and all stuff like that. So yeah, it was dogs. <laughs> Wait, which? I'm sorry. What kind of dogs do you have? I have okay, now. so. I, I want to say, keep in mind, I'm living with my family right now. We have okay. six dogs right now, I think. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> my 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 uh my stepmom is a very big person when it comes to dogs and such, and there's yeah. rarely a time to where we have less than like four dogs in the house at once. Wow. Um, okay. It's it's mainly been boxers because they're a good breed, at least in her eyes. We recently just got okay, one cool. a few months. We recently got one like a few months back. That's like a, a pure breed puppy. Hmm. But, like, there's, like, a little cleft with her, like, upper lip or something like yeah. that. My dad says that she she looks like a like an offspring of, like, the predator or something like that when they have their mouth open or whatnot. Yeah. That's so cute. But, like, we, we, got, we got those. We got three of them that are like that. We got a, a hound mix. We have mm -hmm. uh, cool. what was my grandpa's dog. Um, it was, like, a little oh. chaweeny thing. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is. <laughs> We, we we call her a rat, but, you know, that's lovingly, out of yeah. love. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, I, I literally, my partner has a cat, and, like, I'm just like, oh, you bitch. You bitch. <laughs> but, like, it's just like, oh, can I swear? I'm sorry. Oh, I don't give a fuck. Go for it. <laughs> okay. 
Well, I, I saw that other people were on other podcasts, and I'm like, I don't know, has the policy changed? Like, nah, for nah. Me, it's, I don't know. It, <laughs> okay, cool. It's one of those, this, this podcast is not worn to any sort of, like, you know, monetary value or anything like that. So we were just like, <laughs> wow, guns in the West until okay. I get something that says otherwise. <laughs> Yes, get a sponsor. That'd be awesome. I, I'm I'm working That'd towards really- that. I'm trying to. I need to figure out like the uh, was it affiliate programs because there's like stuff that mm-hmm. I could do through that. I just need to figure out yeah. how to do that. If if there's anyone out there right. listening, I would love to know. <laughs> yes, please come on, let's go. Exactly, exactly. Oh, also, I'm gonna go ahead and give you an apology. You might hear it already right now. If you hear mowing in the background, my dad's mowing the lawn. So. Oh, cool. That's fine. <laughs> like literally, I have an apartment. So every once in a while they do yard work and like, it's so loud yeah. and I was so scared because it's the weekend. I was so scared. I was like, I'm going to do yard work. Like while I'm doing this, I was freaking out. And like, there was an RC car, like driving around like nah. for like a couple minutes. So I was like, Oh God, <laughs> but it's been fine. So I was going to say, cool. at least when it comes to the insides or whatnot, I at least have a sign outside my door that says, Hey, recording, please be quiet. So I can at least control nice. that. Everything else I yeah. can't control. <laughs> yeah, nothing else. That's okay. Same. Exactly. By the way, I just now noticed this. I love the collection of pins that you have right there over your shoulder right Thank there. Thank you. Yes, yes, my pins. Would you like to see some? I would love to see yes. some. I probably have Let's some of them as well. Some. All right. So we got a lot of hell of a boss ones. This one's super Obviously. special to me. Oh, I can because imagine. Because that was... Um, my my boards um, oh really oh that's incredible yeah yeah it was on the pilot i was like that's right ah, that's so cool. uh we got some cuphead ones we got the nice. ones gravity falls um we got some fucking like ace attorney right here <laughs> we got a lot of stuff on here i absolutely yeah. love each and every single one of them i got a couple of them yeah. I, I need to invest in like a cork board or something like that because i do yeah. have i do have some hell of a ones i including i did I get that one yet? I think I did. I recently got uh, the from episode three, the little sketch of the crew that uh, Serbal yes! did or whatnot. Oh, my God. Yes. Those are so good. I the- also got those, so I want them. I'm ready for them. <laughs> I, I I assume I, I mean I imagine you have a lot of those because you take a lot of pride in your work especially and with yeah. all that stuff that you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh uh every time that new merch comes out, it's like the money that I get from the production, I just put it right back into production <laughs> because I'm like oh uh, like it's they're all so good and like they really are. And, uh, yeah, I'm super running out of room, so I actually have a cork board now um to transfer them. There you go. So, like that's that's yep. smart. I was gonna say so I, I was just for the episode alone. I decided to bring out this bad boy. <laughs> yes, that looks great. Dude. Thank you. I love it. I was gonna say I got this awesome. one. I got the uh, cherry doing like the backflip shirt one, and then I also oh, yeah. got the uh, what was it the uh, the the owls one. Octavia and uh, Solus oh, like hey, singing yeah. with like in the pink mm-hmm. background or whatnot. That one was a stunning one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they're all so good. It's like, I have a couple shirts, but honestly, I don't remember which ones I have. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's too many. Fair enough. I, I ordered, well, I think I ordered like three more from this last merch drop, so I'm yeah. already starting to lose count. Uh, it's crazy. Like, I'm just like, every time merch comes out, I'm just like, wow. Well, you know, I look at my wallet, I'm like, I guess, like, here we go. And like, I just get more stuff. And and uh, me and my sister live together and me and my partner like we all live together so mm-hmm. we order at the same time so it's like hundreds and hundreds of dollars because we're all getting stuff so, like, <laughs> we have to it up, and it's like a whole process so that's a lot of fun <laughs> Oh no! Trust me, I can just. <laughs> it's it's funny how it's like basically just like a loop of money just going around at this point with you guys. <laughs> I mean, it is like it is because we love it so much, and like, I want pins from it and I want merch from it. Yeah. So it's like. Plus, yeah, yeah. I give I, I gotta give credit to all the artists that are like collaborating with that and like creating this stuff as well. Yeah. On top of it, like they do an amazing job, like especially when they get like the I fans know. and such. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's like, I really want to make a Dale pin someday, but there's just so many, like, there's just so many things I just don't know how to do, and I want to figure it out, so I might, like, try to, like, you know, slide into the DMs of the merch artists to be like, hey, like, how do you do this? Like, because I don't know what I'm doing, so. Trust me, I, I I have the, the bare bones minimum merch shop, which is the, the, the Teesprings yeah. or Creator Spring, which, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm happy of, especially because they're of what I'm like putting out there and stuff, but I would love to expand one day to include like, you know, hats, pins, you know, all this kind of cute stuff right there. 
I, pins for sure. Exactly. So cool. I will say for you, whenever you do decide to get pins, I'm going to be one of the first people to call dibs on a Sebastian yeah. one or at least a Marianne one. <laughs> yes, dude, yes. I really want to make Sebastian pins. Like, I have the designs. I'm just like, I just need to figure out how to, like, get do it done. It, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, like, I'm really excited. Yay, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Trust me, we're going to be going a good bit of detail into Sebastian and stuff. I made sure to do oh, my right. research and stuff. Cool. Dude, yes, I'm so excited. It's... I love talking about my Sebastian. So good. You should. I was going to say, I, I made sure I had not. So before I had asked you and all stuff like that, I have, of course, heard of Sebastian. I just wanted to actually have the time to sit down and read it. I was on vacation yeah. this past week. I just took like an hour and I just went through the entire 140 something pages or whatnot. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's it's really good. Yeah. I really love it. Seriously. Thank you so much. Like, it's crazy to me because I will have to go back and reread it every once in a while <laughs> just to make sure, like, okay, like, you know, what I have written down, continuity, plot, like, just making sure that everything is going how I wanted it. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy because I've been working on it for years, and, like, it takes me, yeah, like, 30 minutes to an hour, and I'm just like, that's a lot of work for not a lot of time. <laughs> to be going through like oh my god so but that's really cool thanks well, no, absolutely. Trust me. If nothing else, I try to at least make sure I, if I'm gonna bring a guest on, I'm not just gonna be like, yeah. so, so what did, what did exactly did you do? Like, no. If I, if I'm gonna bring a guest on, I want to make sure I do my research and such. And like I said, yeah. I've been wanting to sit down and read Sebastian, but now I actually got a chance to read it. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm in love with it. <laughs> oh man. Oh, thanks. That means so much. Um, I love to hear when people say, "Oh, I've heard of it. I've heard of it." And I'm just like, I love the like scripted energy that the pumpkin comic has like um at the hasman hotel premiere um we were having dinner with some friends and like they were just like oh you're the pumpkin comic person and i was like <laughs> yes yes that had I to have been surreal that. for you I, yeah it's just like i love being known as like the person who draws the pumpkin gay people like i fucking <laughs> love that like it's just so like mysterious i'm just like I'm here for honestly. So. Well, what was I gonna say? At some point, like whenever I'm doing like your little intro with the uh, with Sebastian, for those who hadn't read it or whatnot, I was gonna say basically TLDR: gay pumpkins finding love through crime, aka Al uh, Alex Jones's worst nightmare. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, it, that's the thing. It's like it's it's like such a slow burn, and it's a slow burn for me. Like I want them to kiss. <laughs> I want this. But we can't get there until we have the character arcs. And right. it's very difficult. <laughs> so, and everyone, like, people read it and they're just like, oh, I can't wait for them to kiss. I want them to kiss so badly. And I'm just like, you got to strap in for some bullshit first. Like, you got to hang in that, there with me because I want it too. <laughs> that's the thing that I noticed with, like, the comic is, like, what, what you've already done so much. Yeah. There's already been so much that's in there. But I feel like we're only, like, scratching the surface with what's all in there and oh such. My <laughs> oh, my God. We are literally, like, <laughs> like, we're not even into it yet. I'm just, like, it's been years. And, like, we haven't even finished, like, the first book yet. Like, we're getting to, like, the climax of like book one is like this chapter that we're on okay chapter five i think so like that's where we are and there is like a couple more books after that and it's just there's so much i want to do <laughs> and there's so much and it's just i need <laughs> everyone to, i just i just i assume that everyone is just gonna like give up on me and just be like <laughs> They're not going to, you know, they're never going to get together. It's like, just hold on, you know, hold on with me. I promise it will be worth it. Well, I'm going to tell you it right now, you're going to have at least one person that's not going to give up. And that person is going to be me. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. There you go. Wonderful. Uh, all right, Amanda, before we get started, I must ask the icebreaker question I ask for every single podcast. What is your most unpopular art opinion? Okay. So this, Okay. <laughs> it's not a super unpopular opinion. I think maybe it's an unpopular opinion amongst a certain like community of like in the art community. Mm -hmm. But I really actually love when things go off model, like in animation and like comics and stuff. I think when stuff go off, goes off model and like goes more towards like a certain person's style, I think that's so charming and like adorable. And I love seeing like, I love being able to see like different artists like touching a project. Um, 
so that's like it's kind of unpopular but like i think amongst like a lot of animators and stuff like everyone's fine with that but that's that's as bad as i can uh that's as hot as a take as i have <laughs> on, I'm, uh, on that i mean to be fair i can also think of a lot of people on like you know twitter and such i know that's not exactly yeah. the the best representation for a collective but still as well as i can think of a lot of people on twitter that that you know nitpick certain things when they go like super off model mainly people that like yeah. to criticize steven universe for whatever reason um yeah exactly <laughs> but I, I will say to be fair with steven universe was there really a model in the first place it seems like it, like to the credit of you rebecca know. sugar like the fact that they were more than willing to like let the artists just go with it and get with yeah. what their style they were comfortable with worked for the show but yeah, I can totally get why it's Yeah, so and I, I just love that. I just love that. I just love, like, like even, like, in Hell of a, like, if a certain artist has, like, influenced drawing a certain way or whatever, like, I just, I really like it. I think it's really charming, so yeah. that's my hot take, I guess. <laughs> Is that a hill you're willing that's to die on, nevertheless? I mean, yeah, I'll die on it. I'll, um, yeah, I'll die. <laughs> well, not yet. Let's at least get to the interview before you die, but... <laughs> Then we'll see. Yeah. Then we'll see. Then we'll see. But with that, I can't think of a better way to start the Postmodern Art Podcast. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Nathan Raglan. Uh, feel free to subscribe or follow whatever streaming platform you prefer. Uh, I'm part of the Apocalypse Podcast Network. Go to apocalypsepodcastnetwork.com to see more about this podcast and others in our amazing network. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Postmod Art Pod for future updates and guest announcements, including today's guest. <clears throat> She is a storyboard and background artist who worked on projects like Hasman Hotel, Hell of a Boss, and the upcoming Farfetch with their own riveting and entertaining online comic in Sebastian. Welcome to the podcast, freelance illustrator surrounded by houseplants, Amanda Hurd! Hi! <laughs> How are you doing today? Me. I'm doing great. How are you? I already kind of know because we talked a little bit before. Oh. That is true. How but are you doing? <laughs> nevertheless, I am doing wonderful. Now I'm getting a chance to sit down and chat with you. Um, I've already showed you a little bit with praise with your work, but again, we'll definitely go a lot more in depth with that here in a second. But before we go into the work that you have done, I want to go back just a little bit. I want to know the origin stories of Amanda Heard. What got you interested in Ooh. art and illustration and animation in the first place? Yeah, well, um, I was really always interested in animation as like a kid. Um, I we me and my sister, I always refer to us like a, a unit because we grew up together. But like, um, we used to watch like the SpongeBob movie. We watched Spirit. Like, we would watch these um, these animated movies, and there was just something about them that we would just we were just like obsessed with, and like we would try to recreate the scenes we would draw pictures from them um i remember like on the playground i used to like imagine spirit running like the animation of him running like paired with the music and like how intense like that made me feel like how how cool that was mm -hmm. and i would try to run as fast as he did and i <laughs> like it's like i just was so taken with with just how it looked and I would always try to um, just recreate it. And I would just draw all the time because that's just what I loved to do. To do. Like ever since I was really young um, and I was like that kid in class who people would be like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to like brag because it's like I was in second grade, but they'd be like, oh, she's the one who can draw really good. Like <laughs> she can draw a good horse or whatever. And like, can you draw me like that kind of thing? Uh. Um, so that was kind of what I was known for, like, which I think is like a really common um, thing with artists is that they are known for like in school being the person who can draw like a face and then, oh, I can only draw stick figures, but you should draw this thing. Cause it, you know, that's <clears throat> so <laughs> like when I was a kid, that's, I was just so taken with animation and I'm not an animator, but I also kind of secretly want to be an animator, but like I'm working on it. Um, but like, I just loved storytelling and animation and just, I just thought it's like the most beautiful thing in the world. So yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly good, especially some good roots as well. I will say the original like spirit movie or whatnot, absolutely yeah. stunning. Like it deserves a lot more love than yeah. the Netflix series that's yeah. come out of it or whatnot. Um. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that right now, but like, 
I don't know. My, I don't my, know about that, man. I don't know. My niece is like obsessed with that. Every time I go into like the front room and like she's watching Netflix, it's always that spirit show or whatnot. So right, yeah. <laughs> Which and I mean, it's like I feel so bad because it's like maybe that is like maybe that feeling that I had like running around the playground like like acting like a freaking horse, like an animated yeah. horse, was like what he's feeling right now. So it's like I don't ever want to like take away from people, like especially just because like you know, as the times progress, like animation changes and everything and CG's awesome. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So but I, th- I think like, we also understand, like, I'll say, I think we understand at the end of the day, we're probably not the audience for that show in the first place. So right. <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe not like, <laughs> maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just be an old man and just like stick with my old spirit. Well, well, before you become <laughs> before you become that old man, I want I want to know just uh, so uh, like we said, it started off with just like this love for animation, you know, this love for like, stuff. When did it go from just like a love and something you just did that you felt passionate about to like your legit passion and potentially your career? Yeah. Um, well, I kind of knew from around like you know middle school, high school, like like this is and this is kind of sad but i was like this is the only thing i'm good at (laughs) like like and it's fine because i love it but it was like i'm going to do this like as a career because i just whenever i imagined myself like well maybe what if what if i'm a dentist you know and then i do art on the side or like what if what if i do something that's like really like i could make money from like and you know do art on the side or whatever i just I wouldn't I would just I dreaded that Mm -hmm. I I didn't like that idea I was like I'm gonna do art um no matter what so basically uh I started taking commissions which I think is like a really common like artist thing um in high school like I would drop people's OCs for money and like um do whatever and that taught me a lot about like working with people and like making a product like for someone else Mm -hmm. um even if i didn't necessarily agree with like some choices like i you know would do it and it was lots of fun and i actually have like some people who commissioned me from years and years ago like 2012 and onward who like still support me today so it's like without those people yeah like they were just so supportive and sweet so it's like i love those people um anyway so (laughs) It, it was like once I started taking commissions and I kind of, after I graduated high school, um, I was like kind of thinking about like what I wanted to do um, with my life, which is like, but like. Yeah, that, it's always uh, hard to kind of think about that. Yeah, like it's really stressful. So. Uh, I went to art school for like one year um, and I hated it. <laughs> I there. hated it so much. I, it was it was kind of, I'm not going to say what school it was, but like it was kind of like really fine art centric. Like okay. the, the animation and like illustration, like community that I was looking for just wasn't there. Um, it was actually kind of like looked down upon. Mm. So my experience just wasn't as like as amazing as I was kind of promised it would be because like I thought that I would find this community of people but I just didn't so I I dropped out and it was like a year or two later I was offered a job um by Viv Ooh. and there's a, obviously like a lot of stuff that happened in between that <laughs> But it was really weird because when she offered me the job, it was like this really confusing, like, I don't feel like I deserve this. And yet I know I worked really hard to be here because I draw all the time. Yeah, it's kind of that. uh, (laughs) It's like that survivor's guilt, I guess, more or less. It's like, what did what did I do to get here? But at the same time, like, you know what you did and you take pride in what you did beforehand before you got to that point. Yeah, for sure. And like, that was the first time where it was like, oh my god like it's starting like i just remember when when she gave me the job offer to like do a storyboard test for for hell of a boss it was like it's starting like my career is starting yeah. you know and like that was an exciting like moment and i was still um i still had a part-time job at this point i've worked at like 
pizza places. I worked at Domino's. I worked at burger places. Like I've worked at lots of retail. So I still had a retail job. Like it wasn't like I was making bank, like right off the bat. It was like, I, but I was just so excited. Cause I was like, yes, like it's happening. And like, I am, I made it. Like, it was just a really cool, like experience to have that happen to me. So yeah. <laughs> it, it was that kind of surreal moment of like, the, the, like I said, the things that you've loved throughout the years, just finally like culminating into yeah. this, like the, the big break more or less, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it was crazy because, like, I had been a fan of Vivs for, like, years. Like, it was, like, I I remember, like, looking at her stuff on DeviantArt, like, when I was in middle school, and I was, like, obsessed with it. I made my own OCs, and and I I just loved, like, the way it looked. And then, so the fact that it was, like, coming full circle, and I was being offered, like, a job, and she was like, oh, I like your art, it was just, like, is this like happening? <laughs> like, is this like what? I don't understand. Like, it was just crazy. So, yeah, that that was really like a cool experience, and she's awesome. So, oh yeah, no, trust me, I can I can only imagine. I wish I I wish I had known about deviant art like back in the day and such. I only heard about her a yeah. lot later, like after the mm-hmm. what was it the the die young uh, music video that she made came oh, out yeah. and such. Because there was like yeah. a period of time to where I was just all about like animated music videos, and that was one of the ones that constantly popped up. That one, uh, the Caravan Palace Lone Digger one, like those music yeah. animated music videos like that always catch my attention. And then like that's what it kind of rolled from there to the. Down to the, I guess, uh, yeah, to where it is now. (laughs) No, totally. And I've heard that, like, the Die Young, like, music video was kind of the thing that, that, like, she got almost, like, a new audience from, which is, like, really cool. Um, But, yeah, I was, like, on DeviantArt in, like, the ancient days when it was, like, wild west of, uh, (laughs) it was just really weird. and, And I posted to DeviantArt all the time, and, like, it was so stupid. Like, I, I privated all of my stuff because I'm like, no one needs to see this. It's terrible. <laughs> but if you want, I will give you, I will give you a one drawing from DeviantArt. Uh, I'll give you one. I don't have it on me right now, but I'll pick one out for you to see. Later. The so, world yeah. exclusive. I'll post it right here in the video version, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> you, sh- you shouldn't okay. have made that offer. <laughs> I don't know which one it is yet, but here it is. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, like it's a it's a start. It was the start to the point to where where you are right now. Um, I do want to divulge a little bit into kind of again, just like you know, working with Viv and all this kind of stuff. How has it been, at least in your experience? Because like you said, you've been a fan of hers for years and such, and to the point to where like you're now a major part of the Spindle Horse team and such. Like, how does it feel working with her now? I mean, it's just, like, so surreal. Like, obviously, like, we're we're friends now. So it's, like, it's really nice to to be on that level with her because, like, I've just been such a huge fan. But definitely in the beginning, it was, like, oh, my God. Like, I have a question, and she's so nice, and I'm scared <laughs> to, to ask her, even though it's, like, like she's so freaking nice so it's like I knew that it'd be fine but like it's just been a really really wonderful wonderful experience especially working on like this like the Spindle Wars team because they're just some of the most talented people like I've ever met oh, yeah. like everyone is just so good at their job and I'm just I, I can't wait to like meet more of them because like I met a handful of people at the has been premiere but we've added quite a few more people um mm-hmm. to hell of a boss to the team and i just like want to meet everyone like i'm just really excited and i just love seeing the progress like of the episodes and everyone like doing their job and getting to see like just everyone's flair and like uniqueness and it's just i've been a really really fun experience and i think also it's it's also been like intimidating because everyone's really good and i you know i have like you know a fair amount of like social anxiety or like um what's the word like imposter syndrome you you know where like yeah like it's just 
I will like post my art and I'm just like, oh, it's not, it's not good or this isn't good. And then the, everyone will be like, oh, this is great. Or like, this looks great. No notes at all. And I'm just like, are you sure? Like <laughs> no notes at all? Like <laughs> really? So, but it's like, everyone is just so nice and I'm rambling a little bit, but no, no, hey, trust it's me. Just I, been a I, really I, I was going to say, trust me, you can Good. ramble all you want. I am not one to like limit you or something like that. So if you just start going off on some random tangent and we end up on how turnips are the superior vegetable or something like that, I'm down to go that path. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, kind of though, but like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's really it. It's just like, it's just been a really like amazing experience and just everyone is so talented. And I feel like because I'm on this team now, I am now improving at a rate that I was not before because it's like, I just have, you know, ever I'm just learning so much. Yeah. Like I'm just learning from everyone. And it's just been so cool to like be exposed to that and, and have people like help me and, be really open and sweet and so yeah spin horse is the best <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, I will say I have to agree with the whole entire just like everyone being talented because the stuff that you guys are like pushing out there both as a group and independently whenever I've seen like you guys posting stuff like it's absolutely incredible. I mean, each episode like from the pilot since the pilot has dropped, everything you guys have dropped has been absolutely golden. Um, What was I going to say? I think so correct me if I'm wrong. Your sister's just AJ, right? Um, sorry, I'll say that one more time. You it's were just, sorry, for some sorry, reason, sorry. sorry. It's, it's probably my air now, my end. I was going to say, your sister's AJ, right? Oh, so my sister's Amy. Amy, um, Amy that's right, Amy. Sorry, I was going yeah, to okay. I, I was gonna say, I think if I remember correctly, was she the one that did the, uh, she did like animation on Addicted, like the spin around on the pole scene or something like that? Or is that someone else? Okay, so, okay, so Okay, I'm not actually sure off the top of my head. Okay. She does a lot of spinnies, though. <laughs> quite a few spinnies. Um, so if it's not that spinny, it's it's definitely another one because she does quite a few of them, and also like she kicks so much ass, like she's so good. So like, I, I was gonna say yeah. aside, aside from that point, like nevertheless, whoever did that shot or did those shots in general, like that that spin around alone is probably one of the cleanest shots I've ever seen in any animation whatsoever. Yeah. Like straight up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I think I know what you're talking about. Now that I remember it, I think I know what you're talking about. I think that was Amy. Oh, they. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, the spinning. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like everyone is just so good, and it's like you know when the episodes come out, like I'm like in awe, just like everyone else. Like I'm just like, oh my god, this looks so good, and like I'll have seen progress up to the very end, you know, in some cases, and like. I, I'm just seriously freaking out. I'm just like, it's like so freaking good. Like I just like love it so much. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you should be, like I said, with the stuff that you guys are pushing out there, like every single time, like the fact that the collective internet as a whole just breaks down every time a new episode gets pushed out or something like that. I I think it's a testament. It, it's a testament to the quality you guys produce more or less. Is there a shot or a storyboard or like a background that you could look back in your spindle horse era or whatnot that you're like most proud of like you could showcase to the world and be like this is my crowning achievement while working here oh my god okay um hold on now i think of everything i've done um i am pretty proud of the addict background i, I really go. liked my addict background a lot um I mean, and partially because the storyboard artist, um, who I'm forgetting the name of, and I feel really bad about it, but um, the storyboard artist who I did some of the backgrounds for, they had done a really good like layout. So mm -hmm. like the the building blocks for a very solid background were already there. So it was very easy for me to like tackle it and you know spice it up and stuff. But yeah, so some of the attic backgrounds were really fun because um, there's like shots of like. At, like it literally says addict it's like a neon sign and yeah. like um there's explosives everywhere and i had to like painfully like render all of the explosives <laughs> and that was like really fun <laughs> it was really hard but like I, I really like how it turned out mm -hmm. um and honestly that's the only one i can think of right now but i do love working with like pinks and yellows too so honestly anything that's like 
pink or yellow. <laughs> like I'm probably really proud of. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty clouds. sure. I love pink and clouds too. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure pink or at least red in general is kind of like the base for any uh, spindle horse too. Correct me if I'm wrong anyway. So it oh, works yeah. well with you. Oh yeah. There's so much. Yeah. There's so much. Um, yeah. I also do. I do a lot of clouds. I've been for some reason, like, um, <laughs> given a lot of cloud backgrounds which is a lot of fun uh, so i've gotten really good at drawing clouds i was gonna say you were the one you were the one that did the clouds for the uh for the cheer ups like basically heaven and all that stuff weren't you oh that's right okay <laughs> hold on i changed my mind that's the one i'm most proud of i'm sorry i completely forgot about that I love that background. I'm so sorry. That's the one I'm most proud of is the big long pan with the clouds and the colors. That one. No, you I absolutely like should be proud of that one. I remember whenever you first released like the, the photo of that I actually made that my phone background for a little bit. It was just absolutely amazing. So oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yay. Cool. Thank you. Oh no Yeah, problem. thanks for reminding me about that one. For some reason. <laughs> The biggest map I've ever done. Like, it <laughs> my mind. Okay. Well, as, well as, okay. as well as you said cloud, and I'm like, wait, that's right. <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. I did a lot of clouds in that one, and I forgot. So that one is my favorite one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> And while you are still working on some amazing stuff, and I can only imagine what's coming next, I want to talk about something else that's also upcoming, and that's far fetched. Now I've had Kate, I have, yeah, I've had Dave Captaville already on the podcast, but I just want to know how did you get involved with the project in the first place? Okay, so I know that Ashley on Twitter posted a like, "Hey, um, we're gonna, we need some storyboard artists or to help out on the project," and um, I had a little bit of free time. Um, at the time, not anymore, but like <laughs> I had a little bit of free time and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I, I was very like, and I saw people in the replies and I was like, oh, these people are so good. Like, but I, I kind of was like, I, I really want to try to put myself out there. Like I, I'm very happy working with Spindle Horse, obviously, but I was like, I kind of want to like try to, you know, apply. And if I get rejected, then I'm going to grow from that. So it was very weird because I was going into it like, oh my God, like this looks incredible. And I would love to be a part of it, but I don't know if I'm going to get it. So I'm going to try. So I like built a little like Google Drive folder of like some boards. A lot of stuff was like NDA, so I couldn't even share it. So a lot of stuff was really outdated. So I was just right. like okay and i like sent ashley the link and i was like hey love far-fetched uh here's my stuff and and she like was like hey love your stuff you want to work on it there you go <laughs> like, um okay sure so that was how i started working on it um so that just goes to show literally if you are anyone who's listening to this and wants to apply to something but oh maybe i'm not good enough just do it just apply even if you get rejected like just do it like just do it yeah absolutely right? absolutely i was yeah. gonna say that's the mentality i always have with the the podcast whenever i'm always asking for guests and such it's like at the end of the day yeah. shoot your shot the worst case scenario is they're gonna say no or they're gonna yeah. ignore you but that's then you just move on you learn from it and you improve from it more or less yeah for sure and like obviously like ashley and dave are like incredible and nice people so it's like what are they gonna do like tear me to shreds for even like daring to speak to them like no they're really nice like they, like even if i wasn't fit for the job like they would just be like you know oh we moved on with someone else and i'd be like okay <laughs> and that's it so yeah so that's how i started working on our fit <laughs> And that's I, been really fun. <laughs> I, I do love how whenever they try to tease any like storyboard or something like that, your storyboard seemed to be the one that they prominently show more than anyone else's. <laughs> yeah, well, so I have a storyboarding buddy. Um, his name's Kyle, and he's really good and really talented. Um, so basically, I think that they're sharing more of mine is because mine are a little bit earlier. Okay. In the, in the pilot, um, so like. Um, they don't want to spoil anything. Like I think because mine are very like, um, you know, introducing the characters and stuff. Like there's not a lot of spoilers there. So like, I think they're showing mine more because of that, because Kyle has a lot of like spoiler heavy boards. There we go. But he's really good. <laughs> so I'm really excited for like the whole thing to come out and he can post his cause he's 
really talented. So. Oh, I, I'm. All, I, I've I've been on the the hype train ever since the original like Hell Puppy animatic or whatnot. For God's sakes, you probably yeah. see the poster right there. So. <laughs> I have one too, actually. It's right up there. Oh, there it is. I see uh, it. I see it. It's hiding. It's next- <laughs> yeah. I I, yeah, I I love how you have cool. basically the posters it. of all the stuff you basically worked on. I guess yes. I want to collect them all, like Pokemon. Like I and I was honestly like I would love a Sebastian poster, but I have to like actually work to do it. So right, yeah, I, I would love to have one up here. But I like to collect stuff that I work on because like you know, it's nice. You, I mean, <laughs> you sh- it. you should. I mean, but. if nothing else, like you worked on it, you put a lot of time and effort into it, and like taking pride of it at the end of the day. Sh- I mean, why not? Especially if it's the amazing yeah. stuff you've been working on. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just nice to see. So I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna frame it. Yeah. I'm gonna get a little Michael's fifty percent off coupon. Get a frame for it. And, uh, stick it up on the wall. So. Hey, there's no. What I've been doing. There is no shame in that whatsoever. Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'd say what's what should we expect at this point? But again, David already gone into as much detail into that. I think what was it, the example that I use? It'd be like if Ash Williams was the lead singer of My Chemical Romance or whatnot. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched the one. With, I watched the podcast uh, with him in it. And he's awesome. He is. He's I was, awesome. I was so he's surprised to even day, have him. Man. And whatnot. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, he's super cool. Like, he's super nice. And um, I'm very shy when it comes to like uh, voice chatting on Discord. But whenever we watched my boards with the the crew, he would be like, "Hey, Amanda, like I see you there. Like you're <laughs> hiding." <laughs> Just like, hey. He, he's he's trying to so. chip away at that social anxiety yeah. ever so slightly. <laughs> oh yeah, like. For sure, and it's just, and then I, then I hop in, and I'm like, "Hi, everybody!" Like, <laughs> yeah, it's he's super nice. So he and Ashley are both awesome. Oh, absolutely! It's one of this. <laughs> it's 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 amazing. Nevertheless, I sure. I wonder if he actually got a chance to finally see that Spook Bridge video that or movie that I told him about. <laughs> oh yeah, I honestly wonder that too. They're probably just like they're probably crazy busy. So oh, like, yeah. if not, he, I'm sure he'll get to. <laughs> oh, trust me, I can only imagine yeah. with all the stuff that they've been fully invested in on all sorts of different fronts. I imagine they've got a million yeah. different things that they're trying to juggle at this moment, and I yeah. I know they'll eventually get to it, I, especially with how Dave was <laughs> interested by the I don't with Dave yeah, with the way Dave was interested in the title alone of Spook Bridge. I don't blame him. Spook <laughs> <Yeah>. Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> love that dude. oh goodness i didn't I even, I, I, jesus christ that that movie is a is a trip i, I you, you've probably heard enough of it already but, <laughs> oh, I, it sounds awesome and i kind of want to see it <laughs> okay don't say awesome just say at least okay. interesting at the very least <laughs> interesting it sounds interesting. There we go. Well, That's what I'll say. speaking of interesting, I want to just dive in head first into quite possibly the thing you probably invested a lot of time and effort into, and that's Sebastian straight up, which for those who don't know, I'll go with more or less a rundown from your uh, Tumblr page. I believe it is <clears throat> uh, the story of a pessimistic thief and happy go lucky dork finding each other through unexpected circumstances and learning about forgiveness, love and loss. Also crime. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just have to know, how did this insane idea of basically gay pumpkins finding love through crime, how did that idea come to be? Okay, um, it's kind of a tangent, mm-hmm. so I'm going to go on a little tangent really quick. So Go as far off the tangent as you want. I don't remember when it was. I, okay. It was like 2016 Halloween. Um, I carved these two pumpkins. And one was really happy. And I'll, I'll send you the picture of that too. Uh, one was really happy and one was really grumpy. And I was like, oh, these look adorable next to each other. They look so cute. And I was just obsessed with them. And so later that night, I like sketched out some designs for them really quick. Um, they were very like renaissance like D&D. Like, I don't know why I chose that, but they were, they also looked a lot scarier than they do now. Like, it's such a pepper, like he's super haunting looking. Like he has no pupils <laughs> and he's so scary. But like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I designed them and I just, I, I chose the names Pepper and Sebastian because I thought Pepper was just such a like 
you know, upbeat kind of like peppy. I just really like that name. Mm -hmm. Um, And Sebastian sounded super like douchey to me. I don't know (laughs) why, but so so Pepper Pepper was like this very like, um, you know, happy, giddy little guy. And um, he had a little loot um, and he would play for like stray cats in a graveyard. Um, It's very weird. Like it was much spookier. Um, and like Sebastian was like this uppity kind. Of, I think he was like a prince at one point. Like he was this very uppity, stuck up, you know, selfish, um, kind of a rich bitch actually. <laughs> like he was very like, yeah, like he it, it not he doesn't really he's not really like that anymore. So I don't know why he changed so much. And I just really love this dynamic of like these characters who are really different. Um, I've always really been drawn to like dynamics like that with two characters who are super different and like, you know, fall in love or whatever. And um, so I had these characters for a long time. Eventually they got kind of modernized because I wanted them to have phones and I wanted them to go grocery shopping (laughs) and, and do a lot of domestic things like that. And I was like, I don't really know anything about like Renaissance like era stuff. So why are they here? Like, it was just like, I, I'm not in, like, I'm not really like interested in drawing that. So why are they here? Like, I love, I don't know. I, I love having like modern OCs and stuff. So yeah. um, no shade to anyone who has that. I'm just literally, I'm just stupid. And I, I like, oh. um, <laughs> I just really like having, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just like having modern um, stuff. So <laughs> anyway, um, so they got modernized really slowly and like, you know, Pepper got, you know, eyes, he got pupils um, and he looks really cute now. And I gave him a big poofy sweater and um, Sebastian slowly became like this grungy little rascal. And I just really loved that. And I was like, he's just so like dirty and like, he's just grumpy and angry and he's always and so edgy all the time and I just love that so basically sorry this is like a really long tangent of like the story (laughs) because it starts in Halloween and it just yeah so in that year um in college when I was not happy with the college um I had these characters and I was like I know I want to do something with them because I love them and I want to do something So when I dropped out and I was like depressed and sad and like, I just wasn't happy. I had a lot of self-loathing. Like it just, I was dealing with a a lot of like mental health problems and I was also broke. (laughs) Um, I had a job, but like, you know, it was dominoes or something and it was terrible. Um, Sorry, this this story does get better. I would um, hope so. (laughs) I was, (laughs) yeah, it does, it does. Uh, I was really not happy, and so when I dropped out of school, I was like, well, I don't have enough money to move to L.A. I don't, I don't like, I just, I don't have anything besides, like, a lot of fan art and just kind of random things. I want to make something that is going to tackle my trauma and my emotions and I'm going to make it as sincere and honest as possible even if that's really scary so the story itself like came from me like just sitting down every day um and just like unpacking (laughs) like it was very painful and very like therapeutic at the same time and also not an excuse for therapy Um, I was going to start going to therapy at the beginning of the pandemic, but then the pandemic happened. So not an excuse for therapy. We're going to therapy, but you know, soon once everything is, everyone's like vaccinated. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) So yeah. Um, I just want to like make that very clear. This like, like writing a comic can be very like therapeutic, but like, it's not an excuse for therapy, but it was very like helpful because the way that I would write it, it was just like, I was really unpacking like childhood trauma, self-loathing, like my social anxiety, my my problems with like talking to people and, and just having, not understanding like social cues and and just a lot of issues that I was really like putting into these characters 
And I just told myself at the very beginning of, of the project, I was like, this is what I want it to be. Like, I want this comic to be specifically like really dealing with these. And I want to be honest. I want to not sugarcoat it. Like I want to like approach the story and the character arcs and the characters making mistakes in a way that is is very like painful but they find like happiness and they love themselves by the end of it um but it sucks right now because in the comic right now as of recording this we are in kind of the thick of it for some of the characters so they've been very unhappy for a while <laughs> which kind of sucks you know but like when you're reading it and you read it really quickly, it will hopefully be a little bit more like, you know, easier to get through because you're only reading about 15 minutes of pain and then like you get to some of the better stuff and then, yeah. So that's kind of where it came from was really just me like unpacking like a lot of that stuff. And I am very proud of it. Um, I'm very excited, like, to get to more of it. Um, I think especially, like, Luna, the little Batgirl, um, is totally just, like, a self-answer of me, like, as a confused, angry kid, like, not understanding, like, the feelings that I was having and, and, and processing, like, childhood trauma and, and just, like, <laughs> I'm just very proud of her arc because it really means a lot to me. Like they all do, but like, I'm just very excited to get to more of that. And I'm very excited to share it with people and like the response that I've been getting from people who read it and it means a lot to them. And it's really nice to see people like really enjoy it. And even the hard stuff, even the painful stuff, you know, like I honestly, I honestly love when I post pages and Sebastian does something shitty and I just hear like an audience of like boo <laughs> I love that <laughs> I think it's hilarious like all my friends are like boo boo Sebastian you idiot I'm like I know dude like he's I know he's being so stupid right <laughs> and then I enable him but yeah. Oh goodness. <laughs> that, that, that's the end of my tangent. But that, that's no. That I, I want to say that's absolutely incredible just to hear more than anything else because I know that for for some people you like you were saying like you know it's it's hard. It was therapeutic for you more something like that. For a lot of people, it's it's a it's hard for them to really cope and to express themselves in a certain way. And you've basically found your way to do that in in a good avenue. I will say um, mm -hmm. to to like let you just. Un unload more than anything else rather than keeping whatever you had like bottle up stuff like that this is like a good comfort for you more than anything else and it's it's yeah. great to know that even though it's it's some of the most interesting scenarios with some of the most interesting characters and such it, it's amazing to know that this is about as honestly amanda as it gets like this is the most honest and thorough of yeah. you as it gets as it can possibly be and such like that's that's inspiring more than anything else uh, so Thank you. Thank you. Like it, it's, it's obviously like there are parts of it that it's like, okay, well I, you know, was never a stabby stabby, like crime pumpkin. Like that was never a thing, but like the, the emotions, especially like the emotions, the, the, the backstory, the lore, like the, the trauma pain, you know, so edgy, but like, <laughs> you know, like um, just the feelings that I had and have like, I really wanted to, and I feel like a lot of people can relate to it too. Like, especially with Pepper, I find a lot of people are like, oh, I relate to him so much. Oh, he's so awkward and he's so like shy, but he's excited. And like, I just, I find it really sweet when people really like relate to him. And um, because he, you he's got, no, you got another one right here. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I, I relate to Pepper a whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> Yay, dude, that's great. Uh, that, honestly like means the world to me like just seeing people like say that they relate to something that is so personal to me like you know like in steven universe when they freaking fuse like all the ocs like in my comic if they all fuse together it'd just be me like it would just straight up like they're all just <laughs> facets like of myself so when people say that they relate to them it's like it just feels like oh like you know i'm not alone and like these people aren't alone and like 
just very nice. It's very nice to see. I'm just, I'm just now thinking of like if we were to go back to that club scene or whatnot. If there was a moment to where Sebastian and Pepper dance or whatnot, then all of a sudden lights come out, a fusion happens, and it's just you sitting there like, what's going? What? Huh? <laughs> it's just me. I I wanted to do a comic like that because I thought it'd be the funniest thing. I just haven't found the time for it. Right. But oh my god, like my partner was like. Um, during that club scene, my partner was just like, are they going to dance? And I was just like, Mm-mm, sorry, they're going to fight. <laughs> they're going to fight. Sorry. I, I, I do want to say. They're going to fight. I don't <laughs> I do want to say in that scene, as well as like uh, the the one that was like right after the whole entire club stuff or whatnot, the the parts where we get inside Sebastian's head and like seeing all those like visions and all stuff like that, oh my god, that is absolutely stunning what you did with those, like just the the visuals that you had oh, with that and the different you. like shading and such, like that was a really like amazing lived in experience more than anything else, like that was great. Thank you so much. I, I'm actually, I'm actually very proud of that. I, I, I like. Um, I go pretty hard on colors a lot because I'm just, I'm like, oh, I need more. I need more colors and more saturation. And like, I that's maybe one of my weaknesses actually is that sometimes <laughs> I go too hard and then I kind of lose the like subtleties of the palette. But like, um, I'm really proud of like the grayscale part because it it kind of actually <laughs> really lets you like breathe a little bit mm-hmm. um, and kind of like, you know, experience like what he's feeling. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> absolutely. Lot. Absolutely. A million times over. I, like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see what you've already done so far with this thing. I mean, like I said, we're close to 150 pages right now, but we've only like scratched the surface on what all could be yeah. invested in this thing. And like, if this is what you're putting out there right now, if this is what's already out there, Oh my god, I, 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 it's gonna be hard for me to wrap my head on what's next more than anything else. Yeah, there is a lot. Like, I can't, I'm, I'm, I can't really think of where we are right now. The, eh, the, chapter five. Okay. Yeah, was, we're getting towards the end, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, <laughs> if, if you need a reminder for those who don't know, at least at the time of the recording of this one, they're in the gas station. They have the attendant tied up, and they're about to fight. Pepper finally unloading, just like. I guess weeks of like pent up aggression more than anything else. Yeah. Just he's so done with it. Like he's had enough. He's at his limit. Like he's he, ready. He's, like, he's I'm tired so of being tired like, he's tired of being of the welcome you. mat for people just walking over him more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. He's done. He's like, I'm going to put on my little heels. I'm going to like, I'm going to tell him what's up. So I'm really excited for that. Oh, but, trust um, me. I'm excited right yeah. there with you more than anything else. <laughs> um, one thing I, I do want to like ask, um, I don't know. I remember you, there's a image that is currently your banner on Twitter and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Is, is that banner like with oh, them yeah. waving the flags? Is that like each per- character's like actual representation? Like is, you know, Sebastian gay, pepper transgender, uh, the, I forget what the turnip's yeah. name is off the top of my head. I'm so bad at remembering. Oh, Percy. Percy. Per- Percy. Percy being pansexual yeah. and Luna being a, a lesbian. Um, how important is it for you to have yeah. that representation in the comic? Oh, yeah. Um, I love it. And I mean, I knew from the very beginning, like, oh, this comic's going to be like super queer. Like, it's going to be really cool. I, mean, I like that term, by the way. I know some people like are, you know, they, they aren't okay with it, but I really identify with like the word queer and mm-hmm. gender queer. Like, I'm, I'm really. I really like to refer to that as myself. So I kind of refer to like my characters as that way, but um, you know, it's okay if if no one likes that. So, but um, yeah, that was always the plan. It was like, Oh, this comic's going to be gay as hell. Like, you know, all these characters, like, I mean, Marianne is like a lesbian too. um, But like, uh, we'll get to that later. But (laughs) anyway, um, yeah. So um, funny story about Pepper being trans is that, um, a long time ago, when I was making Pepper, I was like, there was this feeling of like, I know that he's trans, but it was a very interesting experience because I, you know, at the time, like identified as cis. And I was like, well, this this character is like my other half. And if I make him trans, it will almost feel like I'm coming out like as like a non-binary or, or trans or queer queer gender queer so I took a really long time to like confirm that 
because I was really worried that I don't know like it just it was really weird like mental block where I just felt like I I am I don't have the right to like identify that way I don't have like and it's my own thing like it's literally just I don't have the right to like identify this way or I can't you know I've just been a very like shy person so like I'm very like and up until now like obviously like freaking look at me but like <laughs> <laughs> um so um so for a long time like I I knew Pepper's trans but it was like people would ask me is Pepper trans because he gives off this vibe that he is trans and I was like well you know he's he's whatever you want you know because I really wanted people to identify with the characters um and you know if 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 they had canon something or whatever but then it was like it just hit me one day where I was like oh he's trans and so am I <laughs> like it was such a it was such a like he the character has helped me with my gender identity so much because it was just such a like slap to the face of like oh my god I'm not cis like I I am like a genderqueer person um I am definitely somewhere like on the non-binary like spectrum like it was just it just hit me like all of a sudden and so I started being much more vocal about it because I was like yeah I want people to know and I want people to know about me too Mm -hmm. and yeah so like it was just weird because it's like the characters themselves like have actually really helped me like come to terms with my own identity and I feel so silly for not knowing because it's like if you look back at my old art it's so gay like it's just so genderqueer like it's so everything is just so like oh like here's a masculine figure like in a dress or wearing heels or wearing makeup and this is like a really like gender fluid character and yet me at the time was like well I'm cis though so I you know I it's so weird like it's just such a weird mental block that I had of like I just couldn't like come to terms with my own identity even though I was like really happy for everyone else I'm like yeah you go like you go with your gender identity and you do whatever and this is awesome and I was you know like uh, identified as lesbian like for a really long time but now I'm just like I don't know what I am like (laughs) I just know I'm queer um but like yeah I don't know it's like the characters just really helped me like come to terms with my identity so I am wanting to be really vocal like about you know having characters that are different identities and sexualities and stuff um yeah it's a long little tangent but it's it's a good tangent nevertheless comes in i mean yeah words are wonderful aren't they um no it's it's okay (laughs) it's it's great to know that there is that kind of representation out there and like for you it helps more or less like it helps you understand you more than anything else like to hear that this is more than just like a fun little comic you said dude the fact that this is like basically your heart and soul being bored out to the world in the form of two <laughs> gay pumpkins doing crimes and stuff like it's I know. It, it it's hilarious but at the same time like it's great and it's inspiring <laughs> yeah. to know that for you like it, it's great to hear that this has helped you on your journey more than anything else it's it's, it's incredible and it's something yeah. that i i it's rare for me to hear about anyone else doing that kind of thing so thank you more or less for being so willing oh, you know, yeah. to, to put yourself out there and do this kind of stuff for the people. <laughs> thank you. And I mean, it's so silly because it's like the comic itself is so friggin' silly. Like it's supposed to be silly. I feel like I've talked about it very seriously on this podcast so far, but it's like, it's ridiculous. Like it is, it is totally <laughs> my outlet to do silly little like character things, super indulgent. Like it's, it's ridiculous there's just also like a lot of like stuff in it like a lot of like heavy things in it but i i do try to keep it silly and funny and <laughs> the characters are just so 
stupid. I love them so much. <laughs> I, I, I mean, more than anything else, I mean, you got you know, if anything, you said yourself, like, this is a true representation of you. So if nothing else, the comic is a good representation of life to where there are going to be times where things are going to be silly. <laughs> things are going to be goofy or whatnot. Yeah. But there's also going to be times where you're going to have to, you know, it, you're going to have to buckle down because there's going to be some heavy stuff with it. I mean, trust me, what's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's amazing how a comic can go from how hilarious it is that, you know, Pepper and Percy are fighting over who has the best vegetables or something like that. And then could go to like how, and then it could go to like how heavy it is for Sebastian to be dealing with, you know, basically feelings for a past flame. Nevertheless, like it, the, the yeah. duality more than anything else makes it like one of the most interesting comics I've seen out there. So once again, oh, thank, thank you, you for bearing yourself out there and putting yourself out there like that with this amazing comic and such. Like I, I've been hooked ever since oh I, I decided to. Do, I've been hooked ever since I decided to like dive head first into it, and I don't know if I want to get out of the water at this point because this really, really got me hooked. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, that really just like is like the best feeling in the world. Like it's just such a sweet thing to like hear people who are like, "Oh, I read your comic. I liked it." It's like you liked it oh, like that's just so much fun and and i really i really do work really hard on it like whenever i can yeah. i've been really like rocky on updates lately just because i've been so busy but like i don't know like i it just thank you so much like that means a lot to me because i like it too <laughs> but i'm just like it's so nice to hear people like really vibe with like the story and the characters and and want to see these characters get together and and like it's just lots of fun so I, thanks so much i just want to see more like these interactions more than anything else because like what we've already seen with sebastian and pepper already like what's what's been developed and especially what's probably gonna be happening in the very near future is already very interesting i'm also gonna say like the you know all, all the characters just about every single one that we've seen so far has gotten my interest <laughs> one way or another my favorite character so far we said a couple times marianne straight up i i just love how how blunt and deadpan she <laughs> yes. could be at times it's great <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, actually, like, Marianne is straight up, like, was me, you know, working retail. I was exhausted. Like, I I had blue hair, actually, at the time. So, like, I just was like, I'm going to give her that. So, um, and my hair was really long. So, I'm like, I'm going to give her that. Um, but, like, that's great because I, I do... I do like her. She's um very representative of me when I was, like, you know, working, like, several, several hours, like, a week at, like, a job that I hated or whatever. And, like, <laughs> so it's really nice because I see a lot of people be like, I love Marianne. And, like, Marianne was kind of this character that I wasn't sure how much I was going to keep of her. But then people really liked her. And I also <laughs> really liked her. So I was like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to I'm gonna put her more in it. I'm going to put more of her in the comic. Because I do really like her, too. So. Oh, no, absolutely. It's it's wonderful. And it, it if nothing else, especially like I said, with just all the characters that you've had so far for, for those that, you know, have caught up like myself or whatnot, I just have to ask, what should we expect short term and long term? Like I, I'm not saying you have to spoil everything, okay. obviously, because we got to read something, okay. but what would you say that the fan base should expect at this point? Okay. So short term, um, I would expect to definitely see like, we're kind of we're reaching the, the climax of the first book so i don't know if that kind of gives you a little bit of a clue for like what's going on but there's definitely a lot of like emotions there's a lot of like backstory that's kind of bubbling to the surface right now so that's what's going on short term um long term <laughs> there's a lot um <laughs> It's definitely going to be about, we're going to see Luna um, and Sebastian and like their relationship, um, Luna and her character arc, um, and also the, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but like, you know, that lady like over the phone Ooh. that Luna was talking to? We haven't even seen her yet. So, like, long term, she plays a very big part in the story, like, as a whole, um, especially in relation to Luna and Sebastian. Um, and I'm very excited <laughs> um, to get to it. So I would say long term, just strap in for a lot of very cute things 
and very sweet things, but also a lot of very, there's going to be more pain. I'm sorry, but there's, <laughs> it'll be worth it. Um, trauma. We got the drama uh, and we got lovey dovey stuff too. So there we go. That's, I mean, that's that, what we got. That, that, that's that's going to be sweet yeah. more than anything else. I'm again, hotly anticipating it at this point. Like it's, it's absolutely great. <laughs> And I also have to ask, I think we may have touched on it a little bit, but I just want to at least hear it from your personal opinion. What has been your favorite part about this comic as a whole so far? Okay, so far. Um, I think so far has just been posting the pages and, like, reading the comments. Like, I, I just love that because, like, I work on it really, really hard, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's it goes from, like, script to I have to thumbnail the whole thing out and then I have to like actually draw it and I have to double check everything at the very end and I post the pages and it's just been going on for years. So when I get to these moments that I've just been dying to get to, like the club scene, um, I know you had mentioned that music video with the animals. I forgot what it's called. It's like um, neon and stuff. Oh yeah, uh, Caravan, Palace, Gr Caravan Palace Lone Digger is what it's called. Yeah. So when that like came out, I was like, I want them to go to a club. They're going to go to a club. It's going to be like this. <laughs> so like, that was a huge inspiration. <laughs> so it's just so cool to like, you know, to have that idea and be like, Oh my God, I can see it in my brain and I can't wait to get to it. And then we get to it and, and it's just so cool like to be able to post it and be like, here's this idea I had three years ago and it's out now and people can enjoy it. And, so yeah, that's probably the most fun part is just getting to have people read it and, and comment on it and interact with it. I love fan interaction. It's like my favorite thing in the world is just reading what people say. I read everything. <laughs> so much fun. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's definitely incredible and in seeing, especially the, the fan base you've already developed so far with this. I know I'm, I, you develop, you've definitely gotten at least one more member with myself. So there you go. I, I'm certainly going to be excited for what's next. And I, you know, it, again, if this is what we've gotten so far, Jesus Christ, I, I'd say I'm strapped in, but even then I'm not sure how well I'm prepared for what might be next. <laughs> it's like me neither you know like because it's like i'm so excited for the ideas that i have but it's also like i get really anxious sometimes about posting things because i'm like oh i'm going to have sebastian do this i'm going to have luna do this and i'm like this means a lot to me and you know in some way it's tied to something that i've gone through or a mistake i've made or whatever so it's very stressful to like post things like that and be worried a little bit, like, are people gonna not like this? Like, cause I know people can read and, and interact with content and characters can do bad things and that's cool. But sometimes I just get worried that like, you know, what if people think badly like of me <laughs> for posting like about like my own like trauma and mistakes and stuff because it just is so personal. So it's like, even if it's not real, like even if it's fictional, I'm just like, Sebastian's gonna do a bad thing are people gonna just quit reading the comic and like cancel me on Twitter like it's just like a really weird like fear of mine but so far that hasn't happened so I, I mean so, good, so I mean I mean so far but you know we don't know anything about Sebastian's past and I'm scared to know he might have burned down an orphanage or something like that let's hope that's not the case but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll see I guess it's, it, it's, it makes we'll me wonder what, what exactly he yes, did. Done. It makes me wonder what exactly he did do in order to have his whole entire back catalog erased or whatever that whole entire situation is. Yeah, he's just a naughty, like, little <laughs> little bitch. Like, I just fucking love him so much. He's so grungy now. Like, he used to be so, like, royal and, like, uppity and rich and he all this money. And, like, he, it's like now he's, like, this broke, dirty, like, nasty little goblin and i'm just like I love he, you. he he went from being a pompous <laughs> bitch to just a bitch um <laughs> just a straight up bitch. like he's just he's just so angry and like <laughs> just like all my characters are so mad all the time pepper's the only one who's just like 
<laughs> Can everyone just get along, please? I'm so tired. Oh, goodness. I think that's <laughs> why. I've through so much. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I guess that's why I relate to Pepper so much. I see all this stuff going on. And I'm just like, can't we all just get along and love each other? <laughs> That's literally all he wants. And, like, everyone is just so, like, Percy's an asshole. Sebastian's a dick. Like, even Marianne for a little bit was, like, kind of a jerk to him until she kind of warmed up to him. But, like, he's just so tired and he just wants friends. He just wants to vibe, dude. Well, I, I'm sure he'll have – I'm sure he'll have friends, especially if he's able to get out of the pages somehow. He'll have tons of friends to go with after the fact. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He'll he'll get there eventually. He'll get there. To, you know. Put up with my own shit. <laughs> my bullshit that I put in the comic. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Uh, we've, we talked about the, the stuff that you have done and trust me, it is a good resume to definitely be talking about, but I want to go, I want to go a little bit more into the dream scenario, more or less. Let's say I am big shot. Mr. Moneybags. I have, all the funds in the world and I have that I know what to do with and I have connections to anyone and everyone in the business. I come up to you like, Amanda, look, everything you've absolutely been putting out there is absolutely amazing. All the stuff you've been associated with, absolutely amazing. We want to make the dream Amanda Heard project. So given what I have given you, what would be the dream Amanda Heard project with no limits whatsoever? Okay. Um, let's see. I mean, my gut instinct is I would, okay, I would love to do an animated Sebastian something. Like, I would love to do that. I would love to hire lots of different artists. Um, I think that would be so much fun. I would love to have music for it. I love musicals. So, like, I would love to do something like that. Like, Sebastian itself has really derived from, like, my love for, like, animated stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not an animator, and also I want to tell a longer story than I can do in, like, by myself, you know. Um, but if I had all the money and, like, I had all these funds, like, I would love to do something animated. Um, I think that would be so much fun. Um, at least, like, a pilot or something. And if not that, then something else original. Um, I don't know what it would be, but, like... <laughs> I mean, I just love Sebastian so much, so, like, I would probably just do something like that, but I would love to just be able to hire, like, animators and, like, be a showrunner. I think that'd be a lot of fun um, with my money bag. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a good it, it's a good idea. It's a good start more than anything else, and trust me, like I said, if what, what we've gotten so far with Sebastian, I can only imagine, like, an animated form, just how much more it would translate to people more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I've thought about it, but it's like, I just don't have like the money to do that. But like, I'm like, well, I'm a board artist. I could board it. Well, I'm a background artist. I could do the backgrounds. I just need to hire people to do things that I don't know how to do. And then that's it. But like, obviously that's thousands of dollars. So it's like, well, I can't do that right now. <laughs> but maybe someday that would be cool. Well, I mean, that's um, why I said, you know, money bags is here to help you out to make sure all that stuff is funded. <laughs> Yeah, and that would be great. So, if not, how about just like a horrible stage play? There you go. <laughs> like a really bad stage play with like really bad costumes. Like, I want it to be bad. Like, I think that would be cool. I think that'd be fun. That, that, and it's a musical, too. There you go. <laughs> but the, the songs are bad. No, actually, the songs are really good. How about that? The songs are really good, but. The, the stage play is really bad. I think that would be awesome. So, yeah. so basically, what would it be? What would it be like the the Spider Man musical that they tried to make but with better songs or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It would be it would be um, a Sebastian stage play, and we would hire like people who like don't know what they're doing, and it would just be terrible. And I think that. That would be awesome. <laughs> I think that'd be great. But the songs are great, and you know, I think that'd be lots of fun. So basically, yeah. we need. That's my dream. So basically, we I need guess. to find a way to clone Tommy Wiseau like at least five different times and have him be the lead yeah. for that musical. <laughs> yeah, like I think that would be awesome. Like I just would love to just go down in history as like one of the worst, like 
I don't, I don't know. Like, what would the, what, who's the person in charge of a musical? I don't even know. Producer? Uh, yeah, there director? you go. I don't I, know. I was going to say. I just want to go down in history as the worst person. Basically, what you're saying is we're going to make a live action, a, a, a live recreation of the producers by Mel, by Mel yeah. Brooks. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I just, I want to get canceled. <laughs> you want to get- I just, I want to be like, I want everyone to hate me that's what i want that's that's my dream thanks for the money it's going to good use it's going to great use i can tell you that right now yeah yeah uh, all right well now we've had like the dream scenario let's let's get back down a little bit to reality <laughs> yeah let's get back to reality i i have to ask you know i'll ask the super duper generic question where do you hope to see yourself say five ten years from now Ooh, okay. Um, I definitely have plans to print um, Sebastian comics. Like, I, I, I kind of know like what I'm gonna do. I kind of know like the logistics of it. Um, I've always wanted to publish a book, like since I was a kid. So I'm like really dead set on that like once I'm done with book one I'm like I'm gonna figure out how to do it I'm gonna print it um somehow um and honestly like in five to ten years I don't know I want savings (laughs) I want a little bit more savings um I want them books um I just want to have touched more projects like I love working on these projects so I'm just really excited to continue to work on them for years um trying to think like creatively like what else like i would do honestly in five to ten years i hope that sebastian is over with like i hope it's ended by this point because i really don't want to go past 10 years like i remember when i first started out and it was like oh i was watching like youtube videos of like how to do web comics and stuff and there was a video that said something about like oh my first webcomic took 10 years here's how to not do that so that it doesn't take you as long and at the time I was like it's not gonna take me 10 years like it'll be fine and now that I'm looking at it I'm like uh this might take me like more than 10 years that I am don't like that so hopefully at this point Sebastian is over and I've moved on to my own other original projects another comic an animated thing i would love to just make different stuff um yeah i think that's what i would like to do just i would like to make more original projects uh, more comics under my belt you know direct something i think it'll be a lot of fun well there you go i mean trust me i'm yeah, yeah i'm probably gonna be one of several that's gonna be rooting right there for you right there with you rooting for you more than anything mm-hmm. else it's gonna be mm-hmm. incredible to see what you do next um as we're winding down, I just have one last question that I want to ask. Obviously, like you're deeply entrenched in art, illustration, animation, all this kind of stuff. How important is art not just for you, but for the world as a whole? I think it's so important because it's like art reflects like people. Like it just reflects people's like soul and like, you know, their uniqueness and art is just what you it's like a language you know you can just tell so much about a person like just based on like how they draw and like what they put out creatively even if it's not even like anything like even if someone's not like professional just seeing like how people draw and express themselves like creatively in any way they want I think is just so important and and cool and I I love to see like people grow and improve and I just love to see people's different creative voices and and look at art that gets put out and be like, oh, I, I wouldn't have thought about it that way. That's really smart. Like maybe I want to apply that like to what I do. And I think that's a lot of fun. Just ha- meeting people and like just <laughs> art is just so cool. And I just love to see um, people just really express themselves that way. So yeah <laughs> there we go that that is a wonderful way to word it if i do say so myself uh with that that's all the questions that i have um i've already showered you with a lot of praise but i'm gonna show you with some more because it's my podcast i do what i want um <laughs> uh again it's it's wonderful to see kind of how much you've already done so far like in 
frankly, a short amount of time, you know, being able to be part of basically the DNA of spin the horse at this point and helping them out with their stuff. <laughs> and it's just going through Sebastian and all that you've put out through there. Like it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, actually getting to sit down and chat and actually getting to hear your story and hearing how much that, it has helped you more than anything else. Gives me a, a further appreciation for the characters and for the comic as a whole. And if this is what you're already doing right now, I'm already hotly anticipating what's going to be next for you, whether it be another 10 years with Sebastian, although it, it, for your sake, hopefully not. <laughs> or whether... We'll see, honestly. I don't know at this point. I'm scared. <laughs> Fair enough. It's, hey, it's, there's nothing wrong with being scared. Um, but whether it be, you know, whatever comes next with Sebastian or, you know, getting further with animation, like get, to do some animations yourself, I'm already excited for what's next for you. And I'm going to be right there. I'm going to be one of thousands, hopefully millions at this point, that will be written with you along the way. So thank you so much for what you do. Keep doing the amazing work. Thank you more or less for your time. Well, thank you so much. And honestly, like, good for you for, like, talking to artists and giving them a platform I think that's super respectable and like obviously like I listened to a lot of, of your podcast before I came on and like you just you ask great questions and you give them like a space to like talk about whatever they want and I think that's really cool so honestly like good for you and thank you so much for having me on because this was so much fun and I loved it so well, I'm <laughs> glad you. I'm glad you had a good time more than anything else I you know I I try that that was the thing that I wanted to push forth with this podcast more than anything else like I I've said this like I've accepted this like way early on or whatnot I don't care if you know 10 people watch the podcast or 10,000 watch the podcast at the end of the day I'm getting to sit down with amazing people with incredible skills such as yourself and letting them just basically just gush about their passion. I I, I, yeah. I I don't know if you've noticed this with people when they're talking about their passion or whatnot, but whenever they get into like a rhythm and like that tunnel vision or whatnot and they get to a point to where like they just want to talk about what they love making more than anything else, that satisfies me more than anything else. So if I could That's provide awesome. if I can get these artists that I'm bringing on a chance to like really showcase themselves and let the world know just how amazing they are who am I to stop it yeah. I, I want to be able to give them that yeah platform. I mean that's great <laughs> Yeah, I think that's awesome. So, like good for you, honestly. <laughs> that's really cool. So, I'm super appreciate that you well, asked me to be on cuz I was like really <laughs> excited about it and it was so much fun. So, yeah. I, once again, I I'm <laughs> I'm glad you had a great time and thank you once again for just dedicating, you know, part of your time and what could possibly be a very busy schedule at this point. Cause I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the people at home. Go ahead and plug your stuff. Oh, sh shoot. Okay. Um, so I have a Twitter, um, Batberry boo on Twitter. Um, I, my comic is at Sebastian comic dot com sorry i forgot that you were all for a second um i'm not really on tumblr these days um but the comic does have a tumblr um i think it's just sebastian comic at tumblr.com like, i think that's what it is um and batberry boo on tumblr as well um i think that's it really i think that's really all the social media i'm on really <laughs> these days there you go <laughs> Twitter mostly. I'm mostly active on Twitter. So Batberry be on Twitter. Yeah. Well, there we go. And I'll be sure to have any links that you listed and maybe any that you've missed in the description below, like Patreon. Cause I believe you have a Patreon, don't you? Oh yeah. I do have a Patreon. Thank you. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Yeah. I have a Patreon. <laughs> I have a Patreon. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. Like I literally like don't remember if it's like Amanda Heard or Batberry Boo, but I'll give you a link. Like, you can put it somewhere, but I like I said, I the, all the like I said, all Good the links will be in the description, it. so there you go. I got that taken care of. Okay, <laughs> cool. thank you. No problem. I don't no problem. Do you have any final words before we sign off? Um, follow your dreams, follow your passions. That's pretty much it. Just like do what, what do the thing that gives you butterflies, do that thing. That's that's what you want to do with your life, my dude. Just do that thing. <laughs> I need to that's hear it. I need to hear Pepper Ball say up. that and Sebastian at some point. Do the thing that gives you butterflies, because <laughs> I or just <laughs> do the thing that gives you butterflies. Or just have that on a shirt at some point, because I would love to have that. <laughs> do the thing that gives you butterflies. Sure, I'll make him say that. I'll write it down. Make sure I won't forget. <laughs> 
Uh, as long as I get partial writing credit. No, I'm joking. That's all you right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in a little description where I, I put, like, my little, like, oops and yikes, like, description, like, in the pages or whatever. I'll just be like, also postmark. He helps me write this. There we go. There we go. <laughs> but with that, all I have left to say is for the people at home, hasta luego, mi amigos. Thanks for listening to the Apocalypse Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, go to apocalypsepodcastnetwork.com. And remember, every time you support one of our sponsors, you're supporting the podcast you just heard.